Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about the front panel connectors on a desktop PC motherboard. These need to be wired up when you build a new desktop PC or when you perform a motherboard or case upgrade. So let's go and take a closer look. The front panel header, also known as the system panel header or case header, is a set of pins for connecting a computer's motherboard to components that are attached to its case. It's likely to be labelled front panel or F panel or panel 1 or maybe just panel or quite possibly JFP1 which stands for jumper front panel 1. The location of the front panel header varies, although on most modern motherboards it's towards the right on the bottom or south edge of the motherboard relatively close to the PCIe slots. However, on older motherboards front panel connectors are often found on the lower right edge. And on this particular Mini ITX motherboard the front panel pins are over here, top left behind the I.O. ports. If we take a closer look at some front panel headers, we can see that the exact pins vary with not all motherboards offering all possible connections and not all motherboards having the same pin configuration. However, there will always be pins for a power switch, a power LED, a reset switch and an LED for indicating the activity of a hard drive or SSD. Usually there are also pins for a case intrusion or CI switch or sensor and for a front panel speaker or buzzer. However, both the case intrusion and speaker connectors can be located separately from the main block and indeed are sometimes labelled JFP2 or similar. So, some motherboards actually have two front panel headers. To connect to motherboard headers, all PC cases have a bundle of cables that terminate in female jumpers. In modern cases, these are individually labelled like those I'm holding here. However, because the jumpers are not formed into a single block, connecting them is not as simple as, for example, inserting the 24-pin ATX power connector where all wires plug in together and only fit one way around. To make things even trickier, there isn't a totally standard layout for front panel pins and sometimes things can even be attached in more than one place. To demonstrate this, yesterday I downloaded the manuals for four modern motherboards from Gigabyte, ASUS, MSI and ASRock. And I then located the wiring diagrams for their front panel headers. As we can see, two of the motherboards have all of their front panel pins in one block, whilst a third separates out the speaker and the fourth separates out both speaker and case intrusion. As is usual these days, on all boards the power switch, reset switch and drive LED are in the same positions and the power LED can be connected top left. However, on two of our boards the power LED can alternatively be connected here. Meanwhile, where available case intrusion is plugged in here and the speaker or buzzer here. As this hopefully makes clear, whilst there is some level of standardisation, you will always need to check the pinout for a particular motherboard before wiring its front panel connectors. Usually labels are printed on the motherboard itself, although these are not always clear. For example, here the connections for the power LED are labelled MSG, standing for Message Power Sleep LED, which may confuse until the manual has been consulted. Also, some Mini ITX boards in particular do not have any labels printed next to the header, so here you have to consult the manual. And if you don't have a manual, your motherboard's manufacturer and model number should be printed on it. So, chuck these into Google and on the manufacturer page for the board, look under support and search for a download. Whilst up to 12 cables may be hooked up to the front panel, by no means all are necessary to make a computer work, let alone to test it out during a build. And indeed, the only front panel connector you really have to hook up is the power button. To demonstrate this, here I've got 
an old motherboard fitted with a CPU and a cooler and memory and connected to a power supply and a keyboard. And please note, I'm showing you this board out of the case just to make things easier to see in a video and I wouldn't normally recommend running a motherboard like this out of a case. At this point noted, let's hook up these jumper leads to the power button pins on the front panel, and note that whilst it's common for both pins and case headers to be labelled positive and negative, polarity does not matter for the power button, as all it does is to momentarily connect the two pins together. And in fact here, for this test, I don't even have a switch, just the pins on the end of these jumper leads, so if I momentarily touch these together like this, there we are, the computer has booted up, the fan has come to life, and this system would be perfectly happy to keep running just like this with nothing else connected to its front panel. But just to be kind, we will now shut it down with a long press of the power switch. There we are, and having proved the principle, let's now go across to a more modern motherboard and wire in a real power switch. There we go. And whilst we're here, let's also connect up the reset switch. And again note that polarity does not matter here, as it's only a switch. And also note that not all cases have a reset switch, and it's perfectly fine not to connect anything to the reset switch pins. Similarly, a lot of cases don't have a chassis intrusion switch to indicate if the case is open, and once again it's fine to leave these pins disconnected if indeed they even exist on your front panel. Right, let's now turn to the power and drive LEDs. Here the connectors are normally labelled HDD for hard disk drive, even though SSDs are just as common these days, and either power LED or P LED for the power LED. This said, on the motherboard we're using in our open case tests, the power LED headers are labelled MSG as I discussed earlier. Again, to demonstrate a principle, here I've got an LED plugged into a breadboard with some jumper leads, which I'm going to plug into the header. And here, as we're plugging in an LED, we very much do have to get the polarity correct, which for me means putting the white wire down there, and next to it, if I can get in there, always fiddly these things, the blue wire down there. And note that whilst polarity does matter, if you get it wrong, you won't do any damage. So if you wire in your power LED or your hard drive LED and they don't work when you boot your computer, don't worry, just disconnect the power, switch the leads around, and things should be okay. Anyway, hopefully here I've got things the right way round. So I'll bring back in the jumpers that are serving as our switch and we'll boot up the computer. And uh, there we are, we've got a working power LED. It gives you a certain faith in the operation of computing, doesn't it? And you can probably hear the fan whirring in the background now. Although again, we'll give the fan a rest, we'll uh, close it down and turn off the LED like uh, this. There we go. And as last time, we'll now go over to the other PC and wire in its power LED. There we go. And also, of course, its hard drive, its drive. LED. Oh, and note, if your front panel header has two sets of connections for the power LED, you can use either one. They're both wired to exactly the same places. It may be that your case connectors are more suited to one set of pins than the other, but it's entirely up to you which one you choose. Finally, we get to the front panel speaker, which will look something like this or like this. And it's important to note that the front panel speaker has nothing to do with a PC's audio system, but instead exists to provide feedback as the computer boots up and executes what's known as POST or its power on self-test. So, for example, most PCs emit one or two beeps if POST executes successfully, or various other sequences of beeps that indicate a problem with the CPU or RAM or whatever. Anyway, in the past, all PC cases included a speaker, but sadly, this is no longer the norm. 
But if you don't have a case speaker, you can connect pretty much any small speaker to the front panel speaker pins on your motherboard. And I've often used something like one of these from an old radio. This I think is from an old phone, but you can get old speakers from all kinds of old electronic devices. So let's take this happy little chap and connect it up over here. And the speaker wires always connect to either end of a block of four header pins. I probably can't show you that because I'll get my fingers in the way. So let's put them in and show you a close up like that. And do note that whilst the pins on the motherboard may be labeled positive and negative, that a speaker does not have a polarity. Again, you can connect things either way around. So let's return to our fake switch for a final time and turn the PC on and listen out. There we are. We had a beep from the speaker. This PC has finished post. But to be kind to it as previously, we will now shut it down. There we are. And I do of course understand that not everybody has spent 40 years liberating components from old electronic devices. So if you don't have a stock of old speakers, you can purchase a brand new piezoelectric sounder like this, which will now connect to the front panel speaker pins in our other PC. Back in 1996, I built my first desktop PC. And still to this day, I remember being very worried about hooking up the front panel. So if you have concerns about getting the right wires on the right headers, you are far from alone. So many of us have been there in the past. And I hope that in this context, you found this video to be useful. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please smash that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Uh -oh.